Oh Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Absolutely. Oh Getting to talk about Jesus again. Ebony and ivory living in perfect <laughs> harmony <laughs> side by side on the keyboard. <laughs> No, actually, it's actually side by side, one in Jesus. Can you believe how beautiful we look together? Look at mm. this. Ebony and ivory living in perfect harmony with our Jesus. Jesus. That's Thank you, Lord. how we, we live, live as one. And that's how we roll. That's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're so excited, aren't we? Go oh, ahead. my goodness. The conference, these notes, this the Bible study Woo! on Glory. yesterday, it was like on and popping. Yes. And I, I just, was like, good. Woo! Let's talk about it. Yes. Let's talk about it. When what religion divides us, but Jesus made us one. What did Jesus speak to you yesterday from Bible study? I don't think we'll be able to cover that in 20 minutes. <laughs> but one of the things... Woo! that I got from that was it's all about identity in a nutshell. Yeah. It's all about identity. He corrects us, brings us back to our true identity. Even the scriptures, if you look at them really good. Yeah. Closely. It will show you that he's pointing you back to your identity exactly. in Christ. That's the okay? answer. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> all this time. All this time, it's been about how, the 10 steps to peace. That's right. How to get your faith to work. Yes. You know, but it's always been all the time about our identity. Exactly. Exactly, Gwen. And, you know, we I started out yesterday's Bible studies with <laughs> over 40,000 yeah. denominations have been formed by man-made religion. Hmm. And you shared a scripture with me that reminded me where it says, um, the doctrines of men yeah. have made the word of God of no effect. Wow. Jesus, Jesus said that. And who is the word of God, Gwen? Jesus is Jesus the word of is God. The word of God. <clears throat> so the doctrines of men, mm -hmm. the ones who have separated into 40,000 mm -hmm. different doctrinal yeah. lists, have made Jesus of no effect. Wow. Right. Now, that is something to think about for just a minute. You know, we get so caught up in our doctrines, like our list of what we believe that divides us, that we lose the focus on the one that unites us. Mm. That's the enemy. He's the one who kicked down that wall that divided us. Isn't that a scripture? <laughs> of course it is. That scripture that says that Jesus broke down the middle wall of partition to unite us into one new man. And I know it's talking about Jews and Gentiles in that context, yes. but he integrated us into yes. one new man through our identity in him. That's right. Because if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So yeah. that means all of us. Look okay. at, wait a minute, we got to talk to Christy. Okay. Nicole and Christy are driving on their way to Branson right now, and they're listening to us in the all car. Right. Okay. Hello, Nicole and Christy. We love you Good so much. Good morning. Andrea is on here. Tina Martin. Denise. Darlene. Kelly, Darlene Partridge. Donna Ray McCall. We are so happy that hey, you're with hey, us hey, this hey, morning. Hey, 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 oh my hey. gosh. Okay. Let's Listen. Do that. <laughs> It's not just the coffee that's got us like, lit up like this. It's Jesus okay. and the truth that is making us free from all the things that causes us not to be ourselves. That's right. That's oh right. my God! I'm so free to so happy to be <laughs> so happy to be myself. You know, I'm so happy loving to be myself, yourself. loving myself yes. because God loves me. Go back to that forty thousand denomination. Yes. Yes. 40,000 nominations mm. divided us. Um, comparing and division is the ultimate mm. deception of religion. Mm -hmm. It causes us to divide. It causes us to compare. Yes. When Jesus, his mission and coming to the earth and dying our death was to unite us yes. as one Make with us him. One. Make us one. Giving us his perfect identity so that we would no longer mm. look mm. at each other in the flesh, uh -huh. but we would look at each other in the spirit. See, if we look at each other in the spirit, what, is, what does Jesus say about all of us? As he is, so are we. 
In That's what world. he says in this world. And how if we look at Jesus, Jesus has been is righteous. Yes. He's holy. Yes. He's acceptable. He's good. So when we see every each other in the spirit, I would say that we're seeing each other the way God sees them. Exactly. And and this is the perfect scripture. Mm, go ahead. Okay. Here song goes. of songs. Four seven. Okay. Everything, Everything about you. you is beautiful and there, there is, is nothing, nothing at all wrong, wrong with you. you could you imagine if we looked at each other that way Glenn? Mm -hmm. i mean all of us looked I'm, at each other would, would we be holding anything against each other um no but sometimes we do but we get our eyes back on jesus and oh she's beautiful there's nothing wrong with her that's exactly right because we know that we do sometimes but guess what we know the truth Amen. about each other and we can Amen. take our hearts to jesus Amen. right and once we take our hearts to jesus and he say you know you love that kind <laughs> <laughs> you might as well How just you admit know it son? exactly <laughs> you know you love that christy rose That's and that right. Ma nicole Marbach. oh my goodness you know yes. you love sherry hensley oh and, and darlene partridge amen <laughs> you know you do the money fam oh look at that hey lenedra oh it's so gosh, good to I see you, you sweetheart so much. Anyways, when I really want to talk about <laughs> this prayer that Jesus prayed for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, in John 17, Jesus actually showed us, mm. I mean, as clear mm. as it's ever written in the whole Bible. Come on, girl. Why he came. Yeah. He said in John 17 that his sacrifice, he came to be the sacrifice to make us holy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say that he's praying for all of those who would ever believe in his sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And then he said in verse 22, for the very glory, Father, mm -hmm. that you have given me, wow. I have given to them. Yes. So that you love yes, that. Power, so that. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Jesus give us his glory? So that. So that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we that enjoy. We do. That's why Jesus made us one. That's why he gave us his glory. So that we could experience perfect unity. And what is his glory, Gwen? What's his, his glory? glory it's just his good opinion of us. Right. Share with them. The Second Corinthians one seventeen. You were saying how the Lord reminded you of that scripture. Second Corinthians what? No, no. Second Peter one seventeen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I taught on a message, and I wanted to find out from the Father what is His view and opinion that glory. Yes. And Second Peter one seventeen, it shows us the glory that the Father gave to the Son. Okay. It says He received. He took hold of, to make use of, the honor and the glory from the Father, from God the Father, when, when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. I like other translations where he said, in whom I take great delight. This is the glory and the honor that Jesus received from the Father when the voice from the majestic came and declared, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. But guess what? As he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so are we in this world. We are the beloved wow. sons of God and this same glory wow. and honor that he bestowed on Jesus. Jesus. What did Jesus say? Father, the glory that I had with you from the beginning, okay? I have given it. I have given it to Gwen. I have given it to Jolene. I have given it to Mary Beth. I have given it to Miss Judy. Yes. I have given them that yes. same glory that they may be one. What's they that might glory? They be one. What's that glory? What it's so beautiful because mm. if we ever wondered, if Jesus. we ever wondered what Jesus meant mm. when he said, I have given them the same glory, Father, mm -hmm. that you have given me. If you've ever wondered, read Second Peter 
117 for your mm -hmm, son. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus, in that scripture, we see that the Father oh bestowed his yes. glory on the Son when he came up out of the water yes. on that baptismal day. When he when the, he represented his death for us mm -hmm. and his resurrection for us. And the Father said, this is my beloved son, the one, I love some of the different translations, mm -hmm. the one in whom I find great delight, oh or the God. one great who delight. is my greatest delight. Mm -hmm. I love that mm -hmm. translation mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I start thinking, Father, I am your greatest delight. Amen. Can you imagine being Amen. your daddy's greatest Ooh. delight? Would you <laughs> ever be afraid? No. Or would you ever worry about what anybody else thought? No. If you really believed that you were his greatest delight? No. No. And not <laughs> only that, but you are Ooh. his greatest delight too, Gwen. Absolutely. So we share in that the glory world. of the Father with our brothers and sisters in Christ so that we can see each other in the Spirit. And you know what that cuts out? It cuts out comparison. Yep, gone. The scripture says, he that when you compare yourselves among yourselves, you are not wise. And we're wise. And we are wise. We are wise. Because, because we, we know the truth. Jesus. Jesus that we are is one our with wisdom. Him. Huh. So when we're comparing ourselves, <laughs> guess what? We've forgotten Come who on. we are. Yes. We are not ones who compare with one another. Amen. If we're going to compare with one another, we compare with Jesus. Aye. Because Jesus Woo. said we are one with him, <laughs> we are one with each other, and as he is, so are we. That's if right. our brother and sister in Christ has treated us wrong, how do we handle that, Gwen? Let's say they've done something that wasn't very nice to us. How do we see them in the spirit instead of well, the flesh? Well, we see them like the Apostle Paul. Okay. okay. All right. Every time we we know about the Corinthian church, don't we? We know how they was. Yeah, we do. But every time Paul brought correction to that church, it was always to call them back to their identity. Amen. And that's the same pattern that we use with our brothers and sisters who have <laughs> forgotten who they are. That's is to right. remind them. That's right who they are. That's right. When we remember who we are, we reach out to the one mm -hmm. who's done us wrong. Yeah. And we remind them that they're wonderful, that Absolutely. we love them and that they're good. Yes. That's how we live in the freedom that Jesus paid such a great price for us to live in. We see ourselves as his greatest delight. We see ourselves as wonderful and good. Mm -hmm. And if we truly believe yeah. that we're wonderful and good because of Jesus. Jesus, then guess what? That one who did us wrong, that one who hurt our feelings, mm -hmm. that one who talked behind our back Absolutely. is wonderful and good and God's greatest delight as well, Gwen. That's how we live in freedom exactly. is by embracing the Father's opinion of each other. And guess what? He's not going to agree with you. No, he's God not. God is not going to agree he's with you gonna, when you are not, not seeing your brothers and uh -uh. sisters the right way. No. He's going to talk to you and say, you're not seeing yourself the right way right exactly. now. I need to correct the belief of your yes. heart. Because a lot of times what we think when people do things to us is that that is who we are. How dare them think that about me? That's not who I am. I can't well, believe they said that about okay, me. Okay, okay. And so God oh. is going to correct your heart That's belief right. and he's going to cause you now to be uh, set free to speak what he says over your brothers and amen. sisters because he's not going to agree with you. And that's what grace does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Grace is amazing. You know that amazing grace we <laughs> sing about? It means that when somebody does us wrong or a brother or sister is acting badly, that there's no judgment in our hearts because grace is the divine influence of yes. love upon our hearts, reminding us yes. that as Jesus is, so are we in this, in world. this world. Reminding us that we're his beloved one, yeah. the one in whom he finds great delight. Even when we have a negative attitude mm -hmm. towards someone, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. when we're holding something yeah. in our heart towards someone, that's going to produce death in us. But Jesus came to give us life. Yes. So he's constantly going to be bringing forth his influence so, so that we'll let go mm -hmm. of that negative opinion That's of ourselves exactly right. and others so that we can live in the freedom that he paid such a great price for us Thank to live in. I want to go over John. Yeah. This is so beautiful. This John eight fifteen when, I mean, I, 
this just blessed me. It's been in my mind and my thoughts since I've been studying for this week. In John 8, 15, Jesus was talking to the religious leaders of the day. And his correction to them was that they were looking at him in the mm -hmm, flesh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this showed me that when we're caught up in religion, mm -hmm. we can all day talk about grace, 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 grace. But when we're caught up in religion, the symptom of that mm -hmm. is we're looking at each other in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And we have a negative opinion yeah, towards we do. somebody. We're holding a fence towards somebody. Because Jesus looked at these religious leaders and he said in John 15, you set yourselves up to judge according to the flesh mm -hmm. by what you see. You condemn by external human standards. But I do not set myself up to judge or condemn or sentence anyone. What Jesus was saying is you are looking at people by their actions. Mm -hmm. You are judging people by their bad behavior, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by their whatever on the outside, their doctrine, their, you know, how they believe. Well, they don't believe, right? So la, 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 right? Mm -hmm. exactly. It's true. It's, it's true. true. They don't believe like me. They don't believe, right? So they're bad, right? Or I can't believe they acted like we're, we're judging each other by external standards. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I do not set myself up to judge or condemn or sentence anyone. And if we're one with Jesus, mm -hmm. how do we act, Wayne? We do not set ourselves up to judge or condemn anyone either. No, because we're one with him. You know, yesterday when you gave that scripture, what I heard is Jesus saying, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see him do. So if Jesus is saying in this scripture that he doesn't judge or condemn, he's hearing the father and he's declaring what the father is saying that he is not judging us. He, he is, is not, not condemning us. us. Not condemning and I know we talked about this in one of the other sessions, but I want to say it again. God is not judging or condemning Anyone. Or sentencing anyone. anyone. Okay. Wow. If that's such a beautiful truth. Mm. I mean, in John 5, 22, Jesus said, the Father judges and condemns no one, but he's given all judgment over to me. Mm -hmm. And then in John 8, 15, he makes it really clear. I set myself up to judge, accuse, and condemn sentence, no condemn one. no one. And when we're living as one, because Jesus made us just like him, mm -hmm. you are beautiful and I am beautiful. You are perfectly righteous mm -hmm. and I am perfectly yeah, righteous. Yeah. You are accepted, approved, his greatest delight. And so am I. And when we live in the spirit, when we live in grace, when we live in this beautiful gospel that has been delivered to us, we see each other that way. Absolutely. We only reject because we feel rejected. That's it. That's it. When I reject my brother and sister, I'm rejecting myself mm. because mm. we're one. You're rejecting Jesus. You're rejecting Jesus. When you push your brother and sister away, Jesus lives in your brother and sister in Christ. Yeah. When you push them away, you're rejecting Jesus. Amen. And we need to see it that way. Yeah. And when we do see it that way, we can run to our daddy and say, Father, help me. Help me to remember who I am. Yeah. I'm just like you. And you judge, condemn, and sentence no, no one. You're not condemning me. You're not sentencing me. Mm -hmm. You're not accusing me. <laughs> and so that is the power for me to live not condemning that's right not sentencing or judging or accusing that's exactly Gwen. right that's exactly wow right. Gwen this is the freedom I'm talking about the freedom yeah. that we have in Christ to live with our hearts completely free of any negative mm -hmm. condemning motion because you know what those negative emotions do don't you mm -hmm. they kill us they, that, that's one of the death they processes us. I mean if you think you can maintain negative emotions internal and nobody mm -hmm. know look they're gonna pop out somewhere gonna pop I out. am a witness those negative emotions they will pop out and it does produce death in us so wow let's uh I, I hear the papa papa saying get up and go 
Get up and go. Get up and go. Woo! You're free. Wow. You know, the glory of God is another thing. I remember years ago, me and you were riding in the car. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking about, we want to get a deeper revelation yes. of the glory of God. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, it's so wonderful that <sighs> God answered the heart cry. Yes, he did. Because in Ephesians, he said that he want us to be strengthened in our enemy by that very glory. He want us to be strengthened Absolutely. in our inner man by the glory of God. His good opinion of us. Yes. His lovely, Ooh. wonderful, good opinion of us that causes us to have a good opinion of each other. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's what strengthens us when we know that we are the son that God delights in. We are the daughter oh, that he takes goodness. great delight in. Yes, yes. That strengthened us in our core yes. and the center of our innermost Love being. It. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Talk about revelation of the glory. He oh. dumped it on us. Wouldn't you say? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> when, when you live, when you truly live, it's the most amazing thing. You know, I shared yesterday and I talk about it a lot because it's something in my life that really, really affected me. My beautiful sister, she probably gets tired of me saying this, but I'm going to say it again because I know comparing is mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we're getting, doing a Women of Grace conference this weekend, and what is the temptation sometimes to come up in your heart when you're ministering with other women? What in the heck am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing to say. You know, they don't say Who's it all. Who's going to listen to me? Yeah. <laughs> what? 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 No. Or oh, wow, that was such a powerful message. Uh, I, you know, my message isn't going to be that good, <laughs> right? I mean, there, there it is. I mean, right there. And it's amazing how, you know, from a young child, I compared myself with my sister, and it caused me to be jealous of her. Mm. Same thing happens in the, you know, if if you're ministering with a bunch mm -hmm, of women, mm -hmm. and that comparing thing starts coming at you. What mm. happens? Do you get jealous of somebody, somebody you, you, sometimes you when get, they do like this most amazing message? And you're like, wow, that was awesome. But I have to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start to perform. And then you start, yeah. No, you because you're trying to one up. No, no, no. We're not one up anyone. Be yourself. Be yourself. You're beautiful. Mm. I'm beautiful. We're gifted. We're anointed and qualified. Because of Jesus, That's when exactly that right. means I have the same anointing as you, and you have the same anointing as me. We all are anointed with Christ. That's right. We have his anointing. Mm. He gave it to us. See, so when we live in the comparison trap, mm -hmm. it's bondage. And comparison can, can come up when we judge people not as good as us, or we judge people better than us. Mm -hmm. That's when comparison comes in. Jesus came to set us free. I want to read this. We are equal in Christ in Ephesians 2. Oh, yeah. Prejudice is ending. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, isn't everybody screaming prejudice in this nation right Racism. now? Racism. Racism. Mm -hmm. Jesus put an end to it. And all. You who, better hear it. Yeah. He put all, an end to it. put an end to it. Mm -hmm. And all mm -hmm. who believe <laughs> the sacrifice that Jesus made will never be prejudiced against oh anyone mm -mm. because we are equal in Jesus. Hashtag, we are one. We are one. We are one. Okay, listen to this. This is so beautiful. Ephesians 2, 13 through 18. Yet look at you now. Everything is new. Although you were once distant and far away from God, now you have been brought delightfully. <laughs> Don't you close, just love it? I love that word. <laughs> Delightfully close to him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You have mm. actually been united to Christ. Wow. You know what that means? One. One. You've been married to the <laughs> King of Kings. Okay. You're married to the King of Kings. You have his name. You have his identity. You have everything that he has. And so Glenn does. And so do I. And so do all of you. Our reconciling peace is Jesus. Mm -hmm. He has made Jew and non-Jew one mm -hmm. in Christ. By dying as our sacrifice, he has broken down 
every wall of prejudice that separated us. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, Lord. And has now made us equal. Come on. Through our union with Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the Father's opinion of all of us. Oh, my gosh. That's the Father's opinion you, of Lord. all of us in Thank Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank he you, favor, Lord. He doesn't favor me any more than he favors Gwen. That's right. He doesn't bless Gwen any more than he blesses me. Although some people think he does, but he really doesn't. really doesn't. <laughs> really, it's a matter of believing that, Gwen. Yes, yes. I mean, how many years did I not believe who I was in Christ? And what I experienced was condemnation, discouragement, worry anxiety mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. wasn't the life jesus no. came to give me was mm -mm. it but did jesus still have the same good he, opinion of yes me? he did he did why was i not experiencing the life of god because you were not taking hold of it I because you didn't know it. it you didn't know it you know i was not believing what my father said about me so i was living in death yeah and jesus came to give me life but when you started talking to jesus show me the truth that set me free guess what everything changed when you stop listening to the religion and start listening and started to Jesus, listening to Jesus, life springs forth. <laughs> His sacrifice broke down every wall of prejudice mm. that separated us. See, prejudice, we you know, we have a definition of prejudice, but really it's any time you think you're better than mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. else. That's what prejudice is. Mm -hmm. well, he broke it down because we're not better than anybody. Right. Actually, without Jesus, the Bible says we all fell short. Yeah, fall. We short. all fell short. That's right. But with Jesus, we became perfect. Come on. Not because of what we do, mm, mm -mm. but because He gave us a gift of perfection. And how many women and Jesus. men out there want and long to be perfect? We strive to, to be Jesus. perfect. Oh, if we could only be perfect, mm. we are. We've been made perfect. <laughs> Could you imagine if you believed that? Glory you to God. You would walk in this world confident mm -hmm, and secure, mm -hmm. never comparing yourself. Now, Lord. will the temptation to compare come at us? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It does all the time. You go into a party where you don't really know anybody, too many people, and you start looking around and you start thinking, oh, this, I'm not supposed to be here. This is not my kind of place. Or I don't these fit people, in. yeah, I don't fit in. These people are better than me they have more money than me they shut up yes what do we do with that one you no, liar. are the king of kings <laughs> woman you hear me you are the bride right. of christ you, you got the highest position already you do not need anybody's approval uh -uh. you walk up in there oh with your goodness. head up and you love on them folk you hear what that's i'm trying right. to tell you that's right because you know who you are there's a confidence that's right that comes when you know who you are, when you know that you are loved, when you know that you're accepted. It doesn't matter who in this world don't accept you. You know, it reminds me, Gwen, of that scripture that says that the weapons of our warfare, warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty through God mm -hmm. to the pulling down of strongholds. Do you know a stronghold is comparing? Yeah. That's a stronghold yeah. that we have all had. I used to live with that stronghold, believe me. I was bound by it. You're in the fortress. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> the shackles were on. And Connie Witter compared herself to everybody. Mm. But how do we live free from that? The weapons of our warfare yeah. are not common, but mighty through God to the pulling down, pulling down mm -hmm. of strongholds. Casting down Come on, every man. thought, every and imagination mm -hmm. that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Uh -huh. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. I'm telling you what, you take that scripture, every thought that mm -hmm. comes at you, mm -hmm. that tries to get you to compare, you say no. Mm -hmm. You know how I handle it? I say, you are, I, I recognize where it comes from, Gwen. Mm -hmm. I know the scripture says the enemy is roaming, uh, roaming around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he tries to devour us by the comparison trap. Yeah. And when I hear it, and I do sometimes, yeah. I say, you are a liar and a deceiver. I will not come into agreement with you. Mm. I am 
the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so are they. And you can't touch this. And you can't touch this. Hmm. We are equal. Thank you, Lord. Thank I'm you, I'm just Lord. as good as they are. Thank They're you, just Lord. as blessed as I am. Amen. We are e See, that's what it means. That's I just gave you a perfect example of living out that one scripture. Mm -hmm. When those thoughts of, of comparing, of judging, of accusing, of offense come to your head, you say, no, no. that's not who I am. Mm. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Exactly I right. am just like Jesus in this world. I am the bride of Christ, and so are they. That's Woo! Right. That's right. Glory! See, that's how you live love. That's how you live love, and that's how you live free. I love it. You know? I love it. Okay. Let's see. We need to we need to probably finish this up, right? Because we're on our way to Branson this week. Is there anything that you wanted to share um i i want to share this last part but i'm gonna let you go first and then we're gonna finish it up with this oh just little notes that i wrote down as we were talking about um the father not judging anyone you know not condemning anyone not sentence anyone and then the 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 thought just came up in me uh that the sentence of death did not come from the father that is what uh, penetrated my heart because if he said he doesn't judge, condemn, accuse, or sentence anyone, then he never has because he doesn't change, right? He right. said, I am the Lord and I change not. Wow. So what came up into me was is that God, you know, this beautiful, wonderful, loving, magnificent love of my life hmm, never has judged me. Amen. Never has condemned. Amen. Me. Amen. Amen. Oh my God! What Thank did the? You, it, Thank you. <laughs> He's such a good, good father. Religion has painted him to be some mean, judgmental, mm. angry God, and it's a lie. It's Our like, Father loves us dearly. Loves mm, us. Never mm -hmm. changes his opinion of us, even when we're acting badly, even when we forget who we are. He never changes. His opinion of never. this one. And that means we never change our opinion of each other. That's wow. right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm driving this home because this is a, an area of freedom that I have experienced in my life like no other. And I want everyone to walk and live in this freedom. Mm -hmm. And the way that it comes is to first embrace how the Father sees you. Yeah. Because if you really embrace it, I'm not talking about a head knowledge. You know, yeah, I, I believe the grace message. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, my doctrine is grace. I'm not talking about that. Mm. I'm talking about living in an intimacy yeah. with a good, good father. Taking your heart to him when you're struggling and saying, Father, remind me again who I am. And when you do that and his divine influence comes on your heart and he reminds you that you're just like Jesus in the world. He reminds you that you're dearly loved, that you're greatly prized. He reminds you that you're his greatest delight. Mm. See, that heals every mm -hmm. offense. Yes. It heals every separation. He says to me, Connie, I don't hold anything. To. See, as he's reminding mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. who I am, Flynn, because yeah. I understand, we understand that we're just like our father. As he's reminding who, me who I am, he's reminding me who he is. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. Because I, me and you, are just like our father. Yeah. And since that is the power to look at our brothers and sisters as one, as equal with us. You know, I have to say this right here. And I say this with the utmost respect and love for you. You are the one, one of the only people that I've seen live this out. Oh my goodness. I have seen you walk and talk this. It's not just a doctrine to you, Connie. No, it's not. This is your life. This is how you live every day. And I have watched it, and I hear, follow me as I follow Christ. And I have been watching you and following you and watching you 
watching how Jesus lives through a human being. And I see that in you. And it encourages me. It really encourages me to say, Jesus, show me the truth that will set me free. It encourages me to walk this and talk this like you do, like Jesus does. Because I'm seeing a living example of that. I've seen people come against you and I've seen your response. And it's not a response from your head. You always consult Jesus. Should I say something, Lord? How do you want me to respond? I've seen this woman walk this. And I want you to know I'm watching you and I'm following you and I'm looking at your examples and I'm living this life joyful as a result of what God is done in you. I know you do. I love you so much. And you know what? I see that same thing in you. We're all growing. Mm. We are all growing in finding yeah. our life. Mm. In Jesus, yes, aren't we? we are. I mean, isn't that what it means when it says when we, we behold Jesus, we're transformed? That's it, and to the as same we continue image, continue to behold Jesus mm. because as He is, so are we. See, that's where our life is. Mm -hmm. The reason why I get so excited, the reason why I'm so passionate, mm. is because I used to live in so much bondage. That's right. I know what it feels like to go in here all the time. I know what it feels like to live in condemnation. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to hold a fence in my heart and justify myself by pushing somebody away that's mm -hmm. hurt me. I know what that feels like, and it's death. Yes. It feels like death on it the does. inside. And Jesus came to really set us free. Mm -hmm. We don't have to live in death and condemnation. No, we when don't. Jesus brought us life, no. and that life comes by embracing exactly. that we are one. Thank you, Lord. With Jesus. That's exactly how And it we comes. need grace to believe that. Yeah. It's like, you know, Gwen said, and, and we learn to when we we struggle because that doesn't mean I don't have temptations. Mm -hmm. exactly that doesn't right. mean I don't have times when I am tempted to be offended or mm -hmm. disappointed or, you know, aggravated. You know that. You're my friend. Uh, exactly. But I, I'm, that's what I'm trying to yes, tell you. I mean, you always come up strong because you always run to Jesus. And that's one thing that you have that you taught me, that you taught my husband before he passed away, was if anything offends you or bothers you, take your heart to Jesus. Wow, that reminds me of when you moved into the ministry house mm -hmm, and we had mm -hmm, that conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What what was the conversation, boy? The conversation was <laughs> take your heart to Jesus. It was, I have one request. <laughs> one request, If yeah. you live here in the ministry house, I have one request. What was that one request I, I had of you, Gwen? You and said, Antonio. Yeah, that you take your heart to Jesus. That's right. When you have any differences. That's right. Of opinion. That's difference right. of take your heart to Jesus. Take your heart to Jesus. And I'm telling you. Let him you, work it out. That is a lesson that has helped me. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. It's a treasure. It's we a, are going oh on Oh, my goodness. On. We're yes, getting we are. sentimental okay, here. Okay, <laughs> we better go on. We're, we're going to wrap this up because we're on our way to Branson today, and we're excited about that, aren't we? <laughs> okay, I want to finish this with um, 1 Corinthians 3. Three through five in Second mm -hmm. Corinthians ten, twelve, and seventeen. I didn't okay. get to I didn't get to that scripture yesterday, so okay. I really want to get to it. But division, jealousy, competition, mm -hmm. arguing over doctrine, and comparing ourselves to each other is a religious mindset. Mm -hmm. It's the result of looking to our own opinion for our identity instead of Jesus. Now, listen to this scripture. This is the Apostle Paul talking, and he says, For you are living your lives dominated by the mindset of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Ask yourselves, is there jealousy among you? Mm. Do you compare yourselves with others? Mm -hmm. Do you quarrel like children and end up taking sides? <laughs> if so, this proves that you are living your lives centered on yourself. Mm. We've lost sight of who? Jesus. Of Jesus. Dominated by the mindset of the flesh and behaving like unbelievers. 
For when you divide yourself up into groups, a Paul group, an Apollos group, this denomination, that denomination, you're acting like people without the Spirit's influence. <laughs> Now, here's the sweet sound of correction in this beautiful, because it's so good to identify. Those negative emotions are good. Mm -hmm. See, so many times we get, the, the enemy tries to condemn us by them. Mm -hmm. But really, if you really understand the way the Father sees you, that he's never condemning you, that when you, when you realize that you're feeling jealous, you realize I've been comparing myself, mm -hmm. you realize that, Yes, I just quarreled yesterday over somebody's doctrine. Yes, I did that. There's no condemnation with it. Absolutely. It's just a recognizing, oh my goodness, I've had my eyes on myself. So, it no, doesn't change who we are. Mm -mm. We are not condemned by that. We just recognize that we need to refocus. Yes. To get our eyes off of ourselves and our opinion of ourselves and someone else. And Turn back to Jesus and embrace again, once again, for the 50, 100,000th time. Father, you love me. Father, you see no fault in me. Father, I am your greatest delight. Mm -hmm. Father, you gave me your perfect righteousness. Father, I am just like Jesus in this world. That's not who I am. I'm not a comparing person. Mm -hmm. I'm not one who argues over doctrine. No. I'm not one who causes division. I'm not one who holds offense. And I'm not one who's jealous. That's not who I am. You gave me a brand new identity. That's right. Thank you, Father, for loving me so much. Thank you for empowering me to get my life from you. That's right. That's the kind of intimacy. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of life that we live. When we see that we've been acting a certain way, mm -hmm. that's not who we are. That's right. We simply turn back to Jesus. And that's what the Apostle Paul did in this passage of Scripture. The sweet sound of correction came in verse 16. Mm. After the Apostle Paul said, are you, are you being jealous of one another? Are you comparing yourself to one another? Are you quarreling about your doctrine? Taking sides? If so, this just shows you that, you, that your life is centered on you. Mm -hmm. And in verse 16, don't you realize? Mm -hmm. Awaken now. Remember who you are. That all of you together okay. are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you. Don't you remember? Mm -hmm. that you're one with Jesus. Don't you remember that you're one with each other? Hmm. Don't you remember that your doctrine doesn't, isn't what matters? So your identity is my identity. And my identity is your identity. Amen. And our identity is God, Amen. Jesus, and the Spirit. Amen. So we're built up into that holy habitation together. I might be brown bricks, okay? Connie might be white bricks. But we're built up together in that same holy habitation. <laughs> I love it. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are one. So and when, that is the measure that, amen. that God wants to build us up into the full stature, the full measure of Christ. What, well, who is Christ? Christ in us. Christ in us. The hope, the confident expectation of experiencing God's opinion of us, which is, you are my beloved son. I take great delight in you. He wants us to be strengthened with might in our inner man with that very truth. Amen. Amen. But not just for ourselves. Amen. But for each other. Now, I want to give an example because I see this on Facebook all the time, Gwen. So this is a perfect example of, you know, when we are trying to, when we have our eyes on ourselves and we are trying to be right by any other, any outside source, <laughs> we enter into arguing over doctrine. See, yeah. that's what happened. That's how 40,000 denominations was formed because people began to argue over their beliefs about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And when they disagreed, they rejected each other and said, I'm going to go start a new group. Yeah. Okay. That's oh, church living, split. Yes. That's living in the flesh. Okay. That is the result of looking 
to ourselves and not looking mm -hmm. to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you what it looks like to look to Jesus, to live out of your identity. Okay, now I'm talking to somebody on Facebook, and we're discussing a belief from the Word of God. And I love to discuss that. I, this is something I love to do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to argue, but I like to discuss. Now, when I realize we're discussing something, and I realize, you know what? We just don't see it. We don't see it the same. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Now, see, when I, you, when I was living in the flesh, it wasn't okay. Mm -mm. I had to persuade that person. Mm -hmm. I had to convince that person that I was, was right. right. And if they didn't come into agreement with my rightness, then I shunned them. Mm -hmm. That's the way the whole body of Christ operates when they don't live in their oneness mm -hmm. with Jesus Christ. Okay, so now back over here to oneness. What does it look like when we don't see eye to eye with somebody concerning doctrine? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I, the Lord has led me to do is when I see, you know, we're not coming to an agreement here. I, I could not be seeing something right, or they could not mm -hmm. be seeing something right. I'm mm -hmm. not saying I'm, mm -hmm. you know, perfectly right in my doctrine, but I'm seeing that, you know, we're not going to come to agreement right now with this. So what I'll do is I'll say, you know what? We just don't see it the same way right now, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Yeah, You're good and I'm good. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that is the way the Lord has taught me to have peace with somebody that believes different than mm -hmm. me. You're wonderful and I'm wonderful. Because my righteousness now is not found in convincing right. you that I'm right. Mm -hmm. My righteousness <laughs> is found in Jesus Christ. And when all it. of our righteousness is found in Christ Jesus, we can live this journey mm -hmm. growing and understanding and becoming enlightened and discussing and yeah. maybe not seeing things the same. But at the end of our discussion, Mm -hmm. We look at each other and we go, you know what? Even though we don't see this eye to eye right now, mm -hmm. even though we might not believe the same way on this particular subject, that's okay. Yeah. We are one with Jesus. And you're like, good and I'm good. And we love each other because he first loved us. And you know, um, with that said, the Apostle Paul said that we, we leave it up to God to make it plain to one another. Yes. We leave it up to God to reveal ah, the truth. That's right. You know, that's right. And because we're free from pride and we're free from shame, you know, we can always go back and say, Hey, you know what? The Lord showed me that, was, that, that you what, right. you, what you were saying is right. You <laughs> that's know, right. because we Love do, it. we do need the sound right. of correction. We need we God do. to correct our beliefs because we live from our hearts. Yes. And we will yes. reproduce the same kinds of things over and over because of us living from our heart. So God wants us to have an abundant crop, he does. an abundant uh, fruit that it, it leads to righteousness, leads to life, yes. you know. Yes. And so I'm, I'm thankful that we had an opportunity to do these series. I am too. This you has know? been wonderful. And really to end it with oneness is a powerful thing mm. because, again, one of the the ultimate lies of religion is to separate mm -hmm. and divide us. Mm -hmm. It actually separates us from Jesus mm -hmm. by giving us a list of rules yeah. and peer pleasing when mm -hmm. we're trying to be approved of everybody. But Jesus really did make us one. How did he make us one? By making us one with himself. Mm -hmm. And when we get our rightness from him, mm -hmm. we don't fight to be right anymore, do we? No. It ends strife between us. There's reconciling peace because at the end of the day, our identity is the same. It's in him. It's in him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this last scripture and we're going to wrap it up. 2 Corinthians 10, 12 and 17. It says, they compare themselves to one another and make up their own standards mm. to measure themselves by. Wow. Mm. And then they judge themselves by their own standards. Wow. What self-delusion. As the scripture says, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, 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 mm. Boast in the boast Lord. Boast in Jesus. But it says here that if we're comparing <laughs> ourselves and using our own judgments to mm, judge each other, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rejecting one another, pushing each other away, we're in self-delusion. What? Self-delusion. Wow. 
Of you want to be in self-delusion? your own making. <laughs> I don't want to be in self-delusion. I want to have the truth that sets me free. And the truth is, if we're going to boast, Let's boast, boast in about Jesus. Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, I boast in Jesus. My determined purpose is to know him. Mm. If mm. I, my, how, how did he say it? He said, I resolved to know nothing. Exactly. <laughs> except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. Absolutely. The apostle Paul said, Jesus Christ is our foundation. Our identity in him is our foundation. And we build upon that identity. Yes. There is no other foundation for which we can build on except for the identity that we have been given as a gift of grace. Mm. We have been made one, brothers and sisters in Christ. We've been made one. Jesus set us free from comparing, from division, mm -hmm. from arguing and fighting, from jealousy. Yes. He set us free by making us one. One. How do we live in that freedom? Believe that. That's embrace right. It. If you really believe that you're one with Jesus, if you really embrace his good opinion of you, you're not going to be jealous of anyone. Of anyone. You're not going to compare yourself to anyone. You're not going to argue with anyone. That's right. And you'll walk free from racism and prejudice and That's right. uh, being divided from That's people. Right. That's you know, right. we, we need each other. We need each other. You know, we need each other. I love body. you all. We oh love you goodness. all. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to miss y'all. Thank you for joining us for this last Facebook Live series. We've loved it so much. We're going to do some more, aren't we, Glenn? We're going to figure out something else. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't stop talking about Jesus. And anyone oh, who wants my to goodness. join us for our mm. coffee in the morning, oh, my goodness. I love doing this. And I hope it's been mm. a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. I hope you've seen something today that maybe you hadn't seen before or mm -hmm. been reminded of something you had seen before. But what we desire for all of you yeah. is to walk in the freedom that we have in Christ. Amen. To see yourself as one with Jesus and remember that everything about you is, is beautiful. beautiful. And there is nothing at all wrong with you. That's exactly We right. love you. We'll see you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day in Christ. Amen.